one two one two a pixel canvas size is incorrect okay this is kind of working but I'm not sure Ooh. yeah so this should correspond as if you have a very high pitch sound something it should uh, activate it looks like two spirals it looks like two spirals doesn't it it should be just the one one and it's only really using the one so so i'm not sure what the alpha spiral is doing there i might say uh, repeating the same text if you ask it to ideally it will also start without this is obviously ah run one two one two this is uh, what was creating the second spiral so we don't really need that what else we had and the code just got rid of one two one two yeah, it's behaving a bit uh, weird it's just obviously responding to clicks and everything and uh, let's start the new yeah so this is a flask application and this uh, HTML and this uh, JavaScript. Uh, we can ask uh, GitHub Copilot to. Uh, can you rewrite the files and folder structure for this project? One two one two one two. Does it look like a Cochlear plan? One two one two one two. One 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 one, one two. Yeah, there should have been activation. Sorry for the annoying uh, sounds. There should have been an uh, activation of that last uh, electrode. Yeah, don't. Yeah, we need to. I uh, probably need to filter. I need. Oh, come on. Did it delete the previous? Only a single image file is spotted. Well, that's a big uh, difference to uh, what uh, GPT can do what GPT can do big difference can upload multiple images and stuff a response uh, doesn't make much sense can you explain the link between the a frequency response and the electrode activation yeah it's because of the amplitude of of that uh, that bit the image demonstrates a simplified simulation of how a cochlear implant works by linking the frequency response of a sound to the electrode activation in the cochlea. That's right. The top part of the image shows a frequency response graph. This graph represents the different frequencies present in a sound and their relative intensities. Each vertical bar corresponds to a specific frequency. The height of the bar indicates the intensity or loudness of that frequency in the sound. Yeah, my stream is using uh, some um, um, suppression, noise, noise suppression, whatever, so you can hear certain things. Yeah, this is me blowing into the microphone. I don't think if it did go into the stream, I apologize for the annoying noise. But uh, yeah, this is blowing into the microphone. The bottom part of the image displays a spiral arrangement of circles, representing the electrodes in the cochlear implant. These electrodes are surgically implanted in the cochlea, a spiral-shaped organ in the inner ear. Each electrode is responsible for stimulating a specific region of the cochlea, which in turn corresponds to a particular frequency range. The colors of the circles represent the level of activation of each electrode. Brighter, more intense colors indicate stronger activation. Yeah, that's right. That doesn't seem to work well. Sound analysis. The cochlear implant processes the incoming sound and analyzes its frequency response. Frequency mapping. The implant maps the different frequencies in the sound to the corresponding electrodes in the cochlea. For instance, higher frequencies might activate electrodes at the base of the spiral, while lower frequencies activate electrodes towards the apex. Electrical stimulation. The implant sends electrical signals to the activated electrodes. The intensity of the electrical stimulation is proportional to the intensity of the corresponding frequency in the sound. Neural signals to brain. The electrical stimulation of the electrodes triggers neural signals that are transmitted to the brain, where they are interpreted as sound. One, two, one, two. Here we go check out uh, bionicals.com. There is a lot of interesting tools. Um, hopefully you will find them useful. And do let me know what you think. And this uh, one is in the works. Would like to keep it nice and simple. This is probably kind of good, good enough. Um, but just trying to check 
if uh, the electrode activation is actually accurate yeah we need to uh, rewrite all this stuff let's see frequency response to the audio or visualizations divided into bands uh, that's correct each corresponding to an electrode it's pretty pretty accurate so far so good the amplitude of each band is calculated and mapped to a rainbow gradient color that's right the rainbow gradient ranges from blue low amplitude rate high amplitude that's right average amplitude that's correct spiral shape resembling cochlear structure the spiral shape is achieved by calculating angle radius for each electrode the electrodes are evenly spaced and along the spiral creating a visually appealing layer okay if you say so each bar how it's corresponding yeah here's where it starts to hallucinate a bit yeah there's a start button which we really want to get rid of don't uh, really need it a start button the audio visualization yeah so it's obviously interactive in the sense that uh, it's your uh, voice a sound analysis web audio api it sounds correct that is processed no dot 10 frequency amplitude values divided into bands average amplitude for each band determines the color of the electrode so just uh, engaging and dynamic display okay if you say so tracks is starting and stopping the audio analysis there's no stop button um references what ah wait about well, audio api yeah to check if it's yeah we've already been there and done that i did update the app info prompts the requirements static a more accurate structure before we had all sorts of uh, other uh, javascript files and uh, not anymore how do we test this thing draw a function number of bands we have it already dead electrode car uh, number of bands yeah it's equal to the number of electrodes that's fine frequency band calculate total energy yeah we're going over each band start frequency end frequency index sounds legit the, the hue is changing the color yeah this makes a lot of sense because we do want the uh, like do a ratio not like an absolute uh, number comment out for a sec use this for a function instead one two one two i don't particularly like it. yeah it's just the way it's being like rendered on the screen right so a uh, total energy yeah, I think that that's like a relative thing. That's why it goes to red. Calculate total energy. We sum up the values in the data array to get the total energy of the audio signal. Calculate band energy. We calculate the energy within each frequency band, corresponding to an electrode. Calculate energy ratio. We divide the band energy by the total energy to get the proportion of energy the band contributes. Map energy ratio to hue. Instead of directly mapping amplitude to hue, we map this energy ratio. A high ratio means the band contributes more to the overall energy, resulting in a color closer to red, high energy. Need the audio frequency generator. Audio frequency generator. I don't have speakers. How do I put input into the microphone with no speakers? That would be hard, wouldn't it? I have to test it with my voice. But that would be annoying, so I'll just do it with my microphone turned off. Yeah, I think I know what the problem is. We might need some filtering first. So we get too much uh, happening in the lower lower frequency. Energy. The total energy variable gives us a reference point for how much energy is in the entire sound spectrum. Energy ratio. By calculating the energy ratio, we normalize each band's contribution. Even if a band has a low amplitude, they might still have a high energy ratio compared to other quiet bands, making its color more intense. Hue mapping. We use the energy ratio to determine the color. Ratio of zero, no energy. Would result in a hue of 200 closer to blue by a ratio of one all energy in that band would give a hue of 360 red 
yeah we just changed the way the energy in each band is being translated i can't say it made it much better but it does make more sense in the sense that it's a ratio like it's an energy ratio instead of uh, amplitude so currently it's hard to test we are doing a model of uh, a cochlear implant it's a cochlear simulator you can see how your voice through the microphone gets translated into well mimicking an electric uh, stimulation on different electrodes yeah i don't particularly like those colors they were better before so yeah that red there is because the noise coming through is a uh, hundred percent well it's so it's calculating 100 percent for that band therefore it's that the electrode is turning red as if it's being stimulated to the full but that's not good I have to filter it somehow i'd like to get rid of the start button but i think it's it's a feature from within the browser that doesn't let the, you record the from your microphone without you pressing on anything on the screen so i don't know how it's safe but apparently makes things uh, safer yeah so it's all work in progress so your feedback will be greatly uh, appreciated so why it's using 118 megabytes memory usage just uh, leaving the website open must be i don't know what it is yeah so this one need to field uh, essentially with this microphone that i'm using just seems to me that i just need to field uh, this uh, a little bit of noise to a uh, freq uh, frequency cutoff of like i don't know what it is a one hertz or so maybe just make the response more flat no that uh, that will not be good set prompt with energy based color no and make sure the electro change color yes but the frequency response the energy a calculation yeah it's correct <laughs> uh, and that the color mapping is appropriate the energy ratio energy ratio uh no we need to make sure we need filtering and yeah, once we mention uh filters we'll be going places because i don't think we uh, have any filters at the moment or at least not that i'm aware of yeah we had some uh, filtering mentioned in the uh, previous prompts but uh, surprise we're not using a uh, gpt4 well not for two months or so because uh, gemini advanced is kindly providing a uh, two what is it two months of a uh, free trial uh, so we'll be trying that but uh, so far i'm just using it like today and yesterday it's not as good it's a bit uh, odd update electric cards uh, refined energy calculation Okay, what did you do conversation yeah and it's just moving yeah it knows a whole lot about uh, everything let's uh, read it because i'm losing my voice total energy smoothing instead of calculating total energy just once we recalculate it in each frame this allows the visualization to adapt dynamically to changes in the overall audio level by continuously tracking the total energy the color mapping remains consistent even when the overall sound volume fluctuates energy ratio normalization we now track the max band energy and use it to normalize the energy ratio. This ensures that the most energetic band always maps to the highest hue, red, providing a clear visual indication of the most dominant frequency. This normalization helps maintain the rainbow gradient effect, even when the absolute energy levels vary. Additional considerations. Filtering. If your audio source has a lot of background noise, filtering the data before analysis might be beneficial. You experiment with simple low-pass or high-pass filters to remove unwanted frequencies. Okay, let's check this code. Um, yes, we're doing refining the energy uh, calculation. Fine. Uh, the audio should be back and it should be closer to the microphone as well. Now I'm using the bot, sometimes I'm losing voice, so I have to use the bot to do the talking. Well, currently it does the coding as well. Uh, doing yeah refined energy calculation have the number of bands here yeah, should be the same as the 
as same as the number of electrodes so we don't actually need number of bands but okay say numbers the number of electrodes frequency bands yeah that's the same calculate total energy okay leaves moving total energy leaves moving should we just take its wood uh, for it no, the main, the main problem is that sometimes there's obviously um, placeholders in the code. We don't want those. Get them off. I'm essentially doing all that. Update going all the way. Hopefully there's no placeholders. Let's wait to test it. Let's just run it. Okay. So this is a bit, uh, well, the colors are more interesting, that's for sure. Uh, let me turn off the microphone for a second because I just want to do <laughs> like a squeaking noise to see if I can get uh, those upper electrodes uh, activated as well. Well, I cannot uh, because you still have a fairly large uh, component there at the low frequency. Yeah, because of the background noise. So question, do we need to get rid of that uh, background noise first I know most engineers will say yes but um, yeah yeah so the main, main, the main difference now that it uh, became more colorful is supposedly because it's uh, calculating the overall energy all the time so it is better uh, for each uh, frame not uh, just once uh, use the normalized energy ratio, this ensure the yeah, air filtering if your audio source has a lot of background noise. Well, so mine doesn't have a lot of background noise, but uh, there is some. Yeah, low pass or high, high pass to remove. Might just give it as an option. Never, never hurts. Can uh, turn it off. If we're doing both uh, low pass and high pass, Okay, if we're doing uh, both low pass and high pass, do we give an option to the user to turn it on and off? Uh, what the roll of what the cutoff uh, frequencies should be? Yeah, there's obviously, well, not obviously, I don't know why. There's no uh, text to speech or speech to text in Visual Studio Code. The developers watching this did not filter setup we create low pass filter and high pass filter nodes and set initial values that don't affect the sound full range filter controls checkboxes and sliders are added to the ui to allow the user to toggle the filters on off and adjust the cutoff frequencies boxes enable disable the corresponding sliders the sliders update the filter frequencies when adjusted yeah it becomes a whole uh, separate project uh, if you creating a uh... A lot of uh, filtering and stuff to keep it simple. Update filter connections. This function handles the logic of connecting, disconnecting the filters based on the checkbox states. The goal is to only have the active filters in the signal path to avoid unnecessary processing. Low pass. Start around 10,000 Hz and experiment pass. Start around 100 Hz and adjust. Ideal values depend on the type of sound you're analyzing. Place the filter controls in your index. 8 TML where you want them to appear. You can add labels to the checkboxes and sliders for better user experience. Yeah, yeah. that's not a bad idea. So this is all additional code, your existing code, electric setup, audio setup, etc. Filtering. Why is it not in a separate function though? Should be all in the definitions for the filters. Check it's uh, still working. Yeah, we obviously need to update the a HTML as well to add the filters. Okay, we have the main container. Just comment it out. One two one two. One two one two. One two one two. One. One. One one one. One. Let's do anything. That's where copper should be better. Yeah, okay, let's see. <laughs> uh let's see how well a Gemini is handling uh, errors. Something in the structure uh, of the code. Filter nodes, load pass are being created outside the scope where audio context is available. Wait. 
Um, yeah, we need to rework the whole code structure. Filter variable initialization. The low pass filter and high pass filter variables are now initialized null. Filter creation inside star button event. The filter nodes are created only after the audio context is initialized, ensuring they are created in the correct scope. Update filter connections with null check. A check has been added to the update filter connections function to ensure that the filter nodes exist before attempting to connect, disconnect them. This prevents the error you are encountering. One, two. One, 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 one. 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 Okay, why on earth do I have them twice? One. One, one. One, 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 one. 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 One, one, one. Okay, there's something wrong. One. This was placed uh, from a uh, within JavaScript, but it would be nice to see if it's actually working. It would be nice to see if it's actually working. Can't tell. I don't think it is. <laughs> every time. Uh, okay, every time you hit the start button. That's not good, is it? Not good at all. Anyway, we'll have to continue this next time. Bye. Go check out the website. We'll be helping the project.